is up nsp football talk vince the prince back over here it's time for another nsp's power rankings week 12. so yeah this is the seventh video i believe it could be the eighth uh I might have my numbers mixed off but welcome back my patients i mean my nsp'ers <laughs> or whatever you guys call yourselves but we're gonna get right back into it over here of course we like to talk about the grading criteria so here it is. Offensive grading will be based on points scored, offensive efficiency, and strength of defensive matchup. Defensive grading will be based off of points allowed, defensive efficiency, and strength of offensive matchup. So now that we got that out of the way, it was another great week. Uh, of course, my Seahawks got the dub. Uh, of course, 49ers lost. It's always a great week when that happens, in my opinion. Uh, but if you are a 49ers fan, go ahead and stick here. Uh, there is something maybe you might like in this video, but you'll have to wait and see where you guys fall. So wait for that. But we'll get right into it. <clears throat> Number 32. We're going to have the Las Vegas Raiders. And I know you guys are saying, what? They're still last place? I feel like there's some other teams that are worse than them, including the Jets. And yes, I do believe that the Jets are not a great team. Uh, but the Raiders are also not a great team in themselves. Uh, they lost to the Dolphins here, uh, 19 to 34, dropping to two and eight. It's just a horrendous record. They are basically tied for last place, uh, for the NFL. Basically Jacksonville just hasn't had their bye week, but I'm pretty sure that Jacksonville and Las Vegas Raiders will end up being, uh, the same record at the end of the season, if not worse than the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, but next week. They're going to have the Denver Broncos. I think this is going to be another straight L. Uh, they've lost a very good amount in a row. I believe ever since I've started this uh, playlist here for the Power Rankings videos, they've lost seven straight. Uh, and I'm including their bye week because I feel like they lost in their bye week too. I'm pretty sure I had them moving down in that week. Uh, but that's going to be the Las Vegas Raiders. They just don't have a lot going for them right now. And I really don't see anything changing this season. Alrighty, next at 31, I'm going to have the Tennessee Titans. Uh, they went ahead and took the L here to Minnesota. It was kind of an expected L in my opinion. 13-23, to 23, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, it wasn't more than two scores like some teams uh, this week. We'll talk about them later. Uh, but Tennessee Titans just really don't also have a lot going for them. And that's just how it's going to stay the rest of the season in my opinion. Um they're going to face the Houston Texans this week, and I don't think it's going to be anything close to a W, uh, but you never know. It's a divisional rivalry. Sometimes these are pretty close, but I think the Texans had some momentum this past week, and I think they'll bring it into this game. So Tennessee Titans, looks like you guys are also fighting for one of those bottom spots to get somebody good in the draft. Next at number 30, I'm going to have the New York Giants. Uh, again, they were on their bye week, as I said last week. Uh, so I had them moving down one spot. It's not the worst that's happened to somebody on their bye week, but they just aren't a team that is very good at this point in time. Uh, so that's why I had them moving down instead of possibly moving up to somebody else who lost uh, down here in the bottom five. But they have a tough matchup next week. The record might not say it as Tampa Bay is four and six. Uh, New York is two and eight. Uh, but it is what it is. I think Tampa Bay is way better than New York at this point in time, and they're getting Mike Evans back. Uh, so the New York Giants are going with Mr. DeVito, and I think it's not going to work out the way they're intending there. I wish Drew Locke was starting, but it doesn't go that way. It's whoever's playing better back there with the ones, twos, and threes, wherever they are in their respective lineups in practice. But New York is most likely going to get the L here. I'd be very surprised if DeVito goes out there and plays and balls out. Uh, the only thing that really sticks out here is this might be good uh, for Malik Neighbors. We'll have to wait and see. And Tyron Tracy, I'm starting him. At number 29, you guessed it, another NFC East team, the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, we just saw a horrendous showing from them this week. Uh, lost 10 to 34 to the Houston Texans in the Texas showdown. Uh, so Dallas will be in the shadow of the Texans for the next four years based off of that matchup. If you, you know, can say that, uh, I know I have a friend who is a Texans fan and his girlfriend is 
a Cowboys fan, so she was pretty mad after that game. But it is what it is, right? And life goes on. Football's football. Dallas stinks. Nothing's changed. Uh, so Dallas next week will be going against Washington. I think this is going to be an easy L for them. Uh, I just don't see anything changing. Uh, CD Lamb is pissed as he should be. Ezekiel Elliott is a non-relevant guy on the team. Dak Prescott is up in his nice little box, uh, scrounging and trying to figure out what's going on with his Dallas team without him, even though they did stink with him. So Dallas just has a lot to fix. Uh, they are huge underdogs in this next upcoming game, and I think that's accurate. At number 28, I'm going to have the New Orleans Saints. Uh, really, they've been moving up and down pretty crazily uh, these past few weeks. Uh, it is what it is. I have them moving up to 28 after this W against Cleveland, 35-14. to 14. It was pretty good, in my opinion. I really liked what I saw from Taysom Hill because he was the guy who was going insane. Uh, I wish Camaro got a little bit more points, but it is what it is. I went 4-1 and one in my matchups this week. It's not bad. The only thing that sucks about coming into week 12 is that New Orleans has a bye week. So if you want Taysom Hill, if you want to start Camara, probably not the week to do it uh, as you'll probably end up getting zero points from them. But New Orleans looks like they should be possibly trending up here. Uh, a couple of guys ahead of them and below them have pretty tough matchups. So it doesn't look like they'll move down in their bye week. Here we go. Jacksonville Jaguars here at 27. Uh, Jacksonville... Just a horrible loss, again, to a team that you're expected to lose by a whole whopping 46 points against. Uh, the score was 6-52. to 52. Jacksonville drops to 2-9. Two and nine. Uh, Right now, they have the worst record in the league, and it really wasn't expected. I thought Jacksonville would have been a little bit better at this point in time. But injuries happen. You know, coaching isn't the best there, in my opinion. And really, that organization just really has no direction. Uh, their owner, Khan, needs to figure something out because it's it's been abysmal. Um, but Jacksonville has a bye week this week, too. I think, if anything, Jacksonville is a team that I could possibly see moving down if anybody below them actually does better, or if I just feel like the New Orleans Saints should move up above them. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but for now, week 12, they're going to sit at 27. At 26, I'm going to have, you guessed it, the wah, wah, New York Jets. Let's say it, guys. J-E-T-S. Suck, suck, suck. Yeah, Jets suck, guys. Uh, three and eight. They had so many high hopes here. I don't know what they're doing firing their GM. I think he was a guy who actually made a difference there. He's drafted so many great guys like Brees Hall, uh, Sauce Gardner, et cetera, et cetera, you know? I think he did a very good job there. I think it's ownership and coaching that really is something that is just not going well for them. Of course, them going after a 40-year-old uh, quarterback is insane, in my opinion, and it's showing now. Uh, so the Jets just suck. They lost 27-28 to against Indy here, a team who is probably not very good at this point in time, but Anthony Richardson did have a good game against them. Um, but can't say the same for the Jets. They are also another team that is going to have a bye week. So maybe I just, you know, figured to move the Jets down to 32 in their bye week. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see you next week. But for now, the Jets will sit at 26, and I do believe they will be trending down uh, for the rest of the season. See how far they can go. Maybe down to 40. Here at 25, I'm going to have the Cleveland Browns. I think the Cleveland Browns, you know, are not so bad. That's why I only have them moving down one spot here. In this week, even though they did have a pretty bad loss to the New Orleans Saints, 14 to 35, uh, it happens. But I don't know. I, I really do think this team has some momentum for them. Of course, they're not winning a lot of games, but Jameis Winston and Nick Chubb bring some ferocity there. And I really think it's good for the, the locker room, especially as they keep losing. Uh, they should get a good pick this year. I don't see them winning too many more games, especially not this week against Pittsburgh. Um it's going to be a tough one. Maybe they put the stunner on them too and get another crazy dub like they did against uh, the Baltimore Ravens. But for now, I think Cleveland should get the L. I just think that the locker room there is doing pretty well, and I think it's going to be good for those young guys that they still have that are going to progress and hopefully make this team better in the long run. At 24, I'm going to have the Carolina Panthers. Yes, I had them moving up quite a bit. 
uh, this week, up four spots, even though it was their bye week. Uh, I just think this team has a lot of momentum coming into this next game. I don't think it's going to be an easy game for them as it is Kansas City. Uh, really, nobody wants to play against Kansas City, especially after they take their first loss on the season. Uh, these guys are going to be hungry to play, hungry to win. Um, so again, Carolina is not favored in this one. A miraculous what? But Carolina could possibly put the stunner on them. You never know. Kansas City might be licking their wounds, and maybe they need another week to get back to shape. Uh, but also Kansas City could just beat and clobber down on the Carolina Panthers. Uh, hopefully not. I really hope that Bryce Young keeps his streak of wins going as he is at two. And it's the first time in his career that he's done that in the NFL. So I'm, I'm really rooting for him. I just hope he has a great game. I hope his confidence stays up, especially going up against one of the toughest defenses, in my opinion. All righty. At 23, we're going to have the New England Patriots. I really can't say too much about this team. Um, they have a great quarterback, in my opinion, for the future in Drake May. But really, what else around them is going good? Uh, the offense is really doing good because of him. Uh, this week, they may have the chance to go ahead and win. Uh, this past week, they lost 22-28 against the Rams. And they're going to go into this next week going up against Miami in a divisional rival. Uh, again, New England is 3-8. and eight, Miami is 4-6. and six. So not too much of a discrepancy there. But I think this could be a close one in my opinion. I think the New England's defense will show up. And I think the offense will too. So I'm kind of looking forward to watching this game, even though it could be just a total letdown. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. At 22, I'm going to have the Indianapolis Colts. Just talked about them as they beat the New York Jets 28-27 to this past week. I had them winning. I uh, had them covering because the Jets were somehow favored again. I really don't know uh, what these betting apps are doing, giving away free money like that. Uh, but Indianapolis is at 5-6 and six at this point in time. They're most likely going to get the L this next week going up against Detroit, as we've seen Detroit clobber on a lot of these teams who are really not put together, I guess you could say, about the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, they've been back and forth with their quarterback situation. Hopefully Anthony Richardson starts the rest of the season. Um, I really think it'll be good for him, especially to play up against some of these better rosters. Uh, so Detroit's going to put the hurt on him. It is going to be a home game, so maybe that makes a difference and you know gives a little bit of leeway to Indianapolis. At this point in time, as I'm recording, Detroit is only favored by 7.5, so basically 8 points. Uh, so it's not too bad considering what Detroit has been doing to some of these teams. We'll have to wait and see, but hopefully Anthony Richardson's got it down, and hopefully he can continue to do what he did last week against some teams coming up. At 21, I'm going to have the Bears. <laughs> Bear down, right, guys? Because you guys are down on the floor at this point in time. Bears are 4-6 and six after taking the L to Green Bay, 19-20. to 20. After that blocked field goal, and it happens. I mean, happened the week before this in Week 10 with the Chiefs. Now it happened again with the Packers getting on the good end of it. So <clears throat> Chicago has another divisional rivalry coming up this week against Minnesota, who is 8-2, and two, as you can see there on the graphic. But really, I think this game should be close. Uh, Chicago looks like their offense is doing a little bit better. The defense has been continuously doing good things throughout the year. I uh, can't say they've had their best matchups, of course, against divisional rivals. Uh, but it is what it is. You know, you can't win them all, especially with the young crew like that and Caleb Williams on the offensive side and Odunze, who actually had a great game this past week. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be a home game. I like the odds for Chicago here. Uh, Minnesota is only favored by three and a half at this point in time. And I think Chicago can keep this close. Uh, but again, it all depends on how Caleb Williams comes out, how that offensive coordinator is going to call the plays for him. Uh, they need to get the ball out quick and they need to utilize the rushing game. Even if it sucks, uh, they need to keep the linebackers honest. They need to keep the safeties honest. Uh, so that way they can go over the top with some of these guys that are actually pretty good on their team. Uh, but Chicago, hopefully you do it right. Maybe this game could possibly be a dub for you. We'll have to wait and see. Alrighty, here at number 20, I'm going to have the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, of course, <laughs> again, another close loss. Uh, I thought they actually might have come back and win this one. 27-34 uh, to 34 against the Chargers. Uh, so they're going to go ahead and fall to 4-7 and seven here. Uh, next week... They have a little bit of reprieve. They have a bye week. 
And I think that's going to be good for them. Of course, their playoff chances are very, very low. I don't think there's a lot of avenues that they can take to get to the playoffs, especially with their division at this point in time and the AFC as a whole. But you never know. Crazier things have happened. Maybe they sneak into the seventh spot and maybe we actually get Joe Burrow back in the playoffs. But for now, they're going to have their bye week. I think they're going to need it. They need to get some things sorted out, both offensively and especially defensively. Uh, These guys are in the NFL. They should be making some plays. But for now, sorry, Cincinnati, you're finally down in the bottom 20 this year. Okay, at 19, I'm going to have the Miami Dolphins staying here for the second week in a row. Uh, really, their W against the Las Vegas Raiders was nothing to rave home about. They are my 32nd ranked team in my power ranking. So again, doesn't give them too much leeway to move up a whole bunch. Uh, and in this case, they didn't move up at all. Uh, but they move up to 4-6. and six. Next week, they have the New England Patriots. I think this is a game they should win, right? But of course, we've seen Miami fumble the ball a few times. And we've seen some injuries that have just taken Miami out of the equation entirely. Uh, So hopefully Miami and everybody can stay healthy. (laughs) Tua just picked you up. Do me good, my guy. Um, But we'll we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I think Miami has been looking better. Uh, Their offense finally got some good points up on the board this past week. And I think this uh, past game should have given them some confidence. At 18, I'm going to have the Atlanta Falcons. Huge drop for them. All the way down from 13 to 18. Uh, So five points drop, five power ranking drop, however you want to say it. It's really because the defense just did not show up. Uh, Neither did the offense, in my opinion, either. Uh, So they lost 6-38 to against Denver. Uh, That is crazy. You're letting a rookie go out there in Bo Nix and just clobber on you? Uh, That's been the memo uh, for a couple of teams. Caleb Williams has done it sometimes. Bo Nix has done it quite frequently. So has Jaden Daniels. So why aren't the Falcons playing their rookie? Maybe they need to make a change. We'll see. Uh, Of course, Penix is out there behind Kirk Cousins, and maybe he'll come in. Who knows? But as of right now, I don't think Falcons will do that. Uh, I don't think they're in the same situation as the New York Giants or anybody else uh, who is starting their secondary or tertiary quarterback, emergency quarterback. Um, But next week... Atlanta has a bye week. So again, they have time to reassess. Maybe, just maybe, week 13. Again, we'll see Penix. But for now, it's probably going to be Kirk. Hopefully they rebound. At 17, everybody, the Seattle Seahawks. (laughs) Uh, I'm pretty excited to have them moving back up from 20. Uh, We're at that position for a whole three weeks. And I really did not like being down there in the bottom 20. Uh, So now we move up. It's looking a little bit better for us. We got a good win against the 49ers there. 20 to 17 on Geno Smith's rushing touchdown. Love it. And I know you uh, 49ers fans don't love it, but when we get to your team, I'm pretty sure you might because I was really, really close to moving them all the way down uh, and moving the Seahawks all the way up. But I'm logical. I am not biased on this thing. Uh, power rankings are probably the place that I'm the least biased, in my opinion. Uh, I go based up all the criteria in the beginning, if you want to rewind, and that's what I base everything off of. So our offense isn't doing the best. Defense isn't doing the best, but they're doing much better. Uh, So again, we're not in the top 16 because I just don't think uh, we've done enough to get there. Uh, We had a great game. Now we need to capitalize and do it again. Next week, we're going to go ahead and face the Arizona Cardinals, another divisional rivalry. Uh, It's at home, so hopefully, 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 we can actually get a dub there at home uh, because we haven't had too many this year, and I think we should have a lot more. But Arizona is the first time we face you. This is the closest game this week on point spread. Uh, Only one point in favor of the Arizona Cardinals, and I think that benefits us because, of course, we like being underdogs, and that's the way we like it. Uh, We like to come back, stun everybody, and I think the Seattle Seahawks can do it this week. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. All right, here, getting into the top 16, at number 16, I'm going to have our divisional foe, the LA Rams. Of course, in the divisional standings, they're just above us, just a tiny bit, uh, just because they beat us uh, two weeks ago, and or three weeks ago, my bad. Um, it is what it is. You know, LA Rams are playing much better, uh, but 
they did move up only two spots this uh, week because it's 28 to 22 against the Patriots. They have a rookie quarterback. Uh, the defense hasn't been playing up to par. And it looked a little bit like the LA Rams were struggling here and there. But the pass game always prevails. Kyron Williams always gets, you know, what he can get. He's a great running back. They have a great offense. Defense is kind of where they can show up, and then they also can't. So that's where it really weighs them down at this point in time. Um, this week, they're going to go ahead and face the tough, tough Philadelphia Eagles. The only good thing here is it's at home. Uh, I really think that the Seahawks can win this week, and every other NFC West team can lose, and I really like that because if that happens, we could be up there. Uh, first in the division again, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, but hopefully L.A. plays well. I do have a couple of guys on fantasy on there, and I think this should be a good game. Uh, of course, Sunday night, so make sure you tune in there, watch there, and uh, get with us on Monday and see what you think about the game. Or just join Discord down in the link below and make sure you let us know what you think of that game on Sunday night. At number 15, I'm going to have the... Houston Texans, after just clobbering on the Cowboys this past week. I uh, really love to see that, along with, you know, a good portion of America. <laughs> uh, again, I don't know if that's actually true, since they are considered America's team somehow. I don't know. I think a lot of people have jumped shipped already, or just uh, quit on the NFL entirely because the Cowboys don't win. Uh, but Houston Texans, 7-4 at this point in time. They are going to face the Tennessee Titans. This is a home divisional game, and I think Houston should win. I think uh, the Houston fans can finally be excited uh, because they were last year too, but now they can finally be excited even more two years in a row. Uh, CJ Stroud doesn't have his best season this season, but they're still playing well, and I like to see that. The defense had a great game this past week, and they had a great game in Week 10. So hopefully in Week 12 against Tennessee, they can continue that trend because that boosts morale so much, and I hope the Texans just go to the moon. I, I love to see it. As you see right here, I got a Texans little uh, towel that they use at their games. Um, been to one of, been to two of them actually, and I really like it there. Uh, fans are very friendly, and you know Texans are my favorite Texas team. So hopefully they do good this week. At number fourteen, I'm gonna have the L.A. Chargers. Uh, of course, this past week they got the dub against Cincy. Uh, it was a nail batter. They let up a lot of points in the third and fourth quarter, but they finally prevailed at the end of it. Uh, scoring that go-ahead touchdown that just put it out of reach for the Bengals. So it was a great win. I'm not going to knock on it. LA 7-3. Did not expect them to be here. I thought they would be somewhere near the bottom or the middle bottom. Uh, but next week, I think it's going to be rough. Baltimore Ravens just had a tough loss. And at 7-4, and four, I think they won eight wins this week. Uh, so... Baltimore is going to bring the hammer. It's a Monday night football game. I'm going to love being on live with Reed that day because this one's going to be great, guys. Uh, I have a feeling defenses are going to show up. Offenses are going to struggle a little bit, as they usually do on Monday night. But second half, they'll come alive. Derrick Henry is going to feast. Hopefully, Zay Flowers is going to feast. And I think L.A. will take the L here. Uh, that's just my opinion. Of course, put it down in the comments if you think totally differently especially those of you who are Chargers fans. <clears throat> Liam. <laughs> uh, hopefully you watch this video, Liam, but again, hopefully you don't because I don't have Chargers winning this week. At number 13, I'm going to have those pesky Arizona Cardinals. They just peck, 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 peck all the time. And, of course, in their bye week, they didn't get to do that against a team like they did the previous week against the Jets. But they might do it against my team in the Seahawks this, this week. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. This is a 325 game. I just love that the Seahawks have a bunch of these games because after church, I get to focus and just sit down, watch the game, and enjoy it. Uh, especially since Red Zone isn't going rampant with the eight Octobox screen. It's only usually four teams playing, or maybe even this week, I think it's three teams playing at this point in time because there are six teams on by. But the Arizona Cardinals are playing well. The offense under Kyler Murray is doing well. Um, of course. Double-headed running back there. It's looking good. Uh, but defense is hopefully where the Seattle Seahawks can get past the Arizona Cardinals and get the dub. But for now, the Arizona Cardinals are still ranked ahead of us, as they are a whole game ahead of us in the division. we we'll wait and see this week. Maybe they won't be. Alrighty, at 12, I'm going to have 
a very surprised team. Again, I'm going to say it again this week. The Denver Broncos. Here at 12, I really did not expect this. They are 6-5, and five, so it's not the best record at this position for a couple of teams here. But I think they have a lot of momentum going into this week. Of course, I'm going to go up against the Las Vegas Raiders after pummeling down on the Atlanta Falcons 38-6. to six. I really don't want to bring up that on the screen anymore because <laughs> poor Falcons. Uh, but Denver has been playing phenomenal. And I think this week against the 2-8 and eight Las Vegas Raiders, I think it could be very much of the same. They're favored by six, and I think I'm going to go with it. So Denver, you keep doing you. Bo Nix, make your name known. Uh, this offense is getting much better with him. And finally, I love to see Cortland Sutton getting back in there and making plays because he's a very underrated receiver. Uh, so I really like seeing him out there making a bunch of plays. At number 11, I'm going to have, for the first time, the Washington Commanders outside of the top 10 in this videos. Uh, they've fallen to 10 before, but never outside of 10. So falling one spot here after the loss to the Philadelphia Eagles, this was a divisional rivalry game. So again, I won't knock them too hard because you can't win them all. Uh, it's hard to do. You have to be one of the best teams in the NFL to go ahead and do that because divisional games are just different. And that's what it was for the Washington Commanders against the Philadelphia Eagles. They tried to hold their own, but they just couldn't. They went down two scores, and Zach Ertz scored that touchdown way at the end uh, to make this look like it was a manageable game. Uh, but the onside kick, of course, was non-successful, and that's how it just rolls out to be. Uh, but Washington next week is going to face the Dallas Cowboys, so it should be an easy game for them, in my opinion. Uh, they are favored by a whopping 10.5 points at this point in time. And... Uh, <laughs> I think I like it. Dallas Cowboys have not covered on any of these uh, in a while. So, again, Washington should have the easy dub. I hope that they can make it back into the top 10 this week. And at 10, right before them, it's going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, of course, they had the bye week this past week. They moved down, or up, actually, one spot uh, from 11 to 10. Again, the bye week. Sometimes people move up. Sometimes people move down. I just think Tampa Bay Buccaneers getting Mike Evans is a huge boost, and that's why I have them at number 10 here. Of course, I really can't grade uh, on a team that had a bye week, but I grade the past weeks. And, of course, they had moved up after a tough game against the 49ers. So I think the Buccaneers are still somebody to reckon with. Uh, this week, they're going to go up against the New York Jets, and I think they should be moving up or at least staying in the top 10 somehow. Um, at 4-6, and six, it's pretty crazy to have them here, I know. But this is a team that has momentum, and injuries have just plagued them. So I still think they're a team to reckon with. They could ruin a lot of playoff chances for teams coming up on their schedule. At number nine, I'm going to have go, pack, go, the Green Bay Packers. So, again, the slim win against Chicago, 20-19. to 19. I expected the Packers to be better. Come on, guys. Didn't you? Uh, I don't know if you guys actually picked the Bears to cover here. I know it was a divisional game, but I didn't have too much trust in the Bears at the way they were playing. Uh, but the Packers, I had a lot more trust in them. And hopefully this week they can gain that trust back because they're going against my divisional rival, AJ's favorite team, in the 49ers. And I think this is a game that I want them to win. <laughs> actually, I know this is a game that I want them to win. This is the one time that you will actually see me... Uh, go for the Packers with Reed. Uh, usually I'm just a passive guy. It's like, oh, the Packers win, cool, whatever. But not like that with San Francisco 49ers. So hopefully the Pack brings it there in Lambeau, and hopefully San Francisco has a tough game. And here you go, guys. I told you San Francisco fans to keep on in this video. Hopefully you did, or if you just skipped ahead, fine with me. But I have San Francisco here at number eight. I think they are a great team. Even though they're sitting at five and five, they are one of the few teams at 500 or barely above it uh, in the top 10. So the San Francisco 49ers just had a bad game against the Seahawks, losing 17 to 20. And they're going to go up against another tough matchup in the Packers, who are 7 and 3, and do have some momentum, especially in Lambeau. They always do. Uh, it's getting a little colder. Hopefully, San Francisco can keep up. Uh, I think Green Bay should win this game. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if San Francisco somehow wins. We'll have to wait and see. See if they move up or down a little bit more. At seven, 
I'm going to have the Minnesota Vikings. This one was a little tough for me, uh, but the way that their defense and mostly their defense is played, uh, I really like the Vikings to still be a force in this league. Of course, they aren't getting great wins at this point in time, but they're still wins, three in a row. Uh, now they're going to go up. Well, actually, they just won 22-13 against the Tennessee Titans. Now they're going to go up against the Bears in a divisional rival. Uh, so... This is at 12 o'clock. I think it should be a good game in Chicago. I think Minnesota should win. As long as they stay ahead of the chains, use Aaron Jones, and make sure that they keep tossing the rock to Jefferson and Addison when he's open. Of course, he's a great game changer. Uh, so Minnesota, you should win this game. Hopefully the injuries that have happened on your defense aren't too bad. Uh, but I think they should win this game. At number six, I'm going to have the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, they are a very, very scary team at this point in time. Uh, of course, they have six dubs in a row, guys. I mean, sitting at eight and two, you were once at two and two. Uh, so that's insane to have six dubs in a row. I really like it from the Eagles. They found their rhythm. They sh shouted at the doubters after their bye week and said, hey, we're a team to reckon with. You better respect us. That's why... We are at the top of the division. Uh, so, again, I don't remember if I had the Eagles winning the division. I think I did because I for sure know that I did not believe in the Giants, did not believe in the Cowboys, and I didn't know that Washington was going to be this good. Uh, so I got this correct. Hopefully the Philadelphia Eagles can keep doing it. The dub against Washington, 26-18. to 18. And upcoming this week, it should be in – Easy game, I guess you could say. Hopefully they beat the LA uh, Rams quite easily. I think they have the running game to do it. I think they have the passing game to do it. And I have a lot of guys from fantasy on that team. So I'm hoping that they can give me some good points. Philadelphia, you should win. Hopefully we'll see you crack the top five this week. All right, at number five, I'm going to have the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> After a tough loss this week against the Steelers, 16 to 18, I really wanted them to win this game to kind of prove that Pittsburgh wasn't that great of a team. But Pittsburgh is great, guys. They're so good. Uh, their defense is phenomenal. Even the offense, when it sputters, Boswell's got their back, six for six in field goals. But this isn't about the Steelers. This is about the Baltimore Ravens. This week, I think it's going to be another tough matchup against another tough defense against the Chargers. And Baltimore 7-4, and four. this is not a home game. Monday Night Football, it should be a no-biter, but so far Lamar Jackson has looked good in majority of these primetime games. Hopefully he can be good enough against the Chargers. Um, we'll have to wait and see. I'm looking forward to this one with Reed on live. Uh, so if you guys want to tune in, make sure you're with us at 7-10, five minutes before kickoff Central Time. Uh, so if you're Eastern Time or Pacific Time or whatever other time, uh, don't bother us in the discord you know that we're central timers we're from texas guys we say it loud and proud uh, you might hear it on our accent i don't know i feel like we don't have an accent but a lot of people say we do so baltimore i think you should win this game we'll have to wait and see monday night will tell us all righty so here at number four i'm gonna have the pittsburgh steelers and, of course, I just talked about them beating the Baltimore Ravens. They finally moved up ahead of them. Uh, last week they were at five. Now they switch with the Baltimore Ravens, who have fallen out uh, pretty bad. Not horribly, of course, but they're still a great team. But the Pittsburgh Steelers are just better. Uh, this week going against Cleveland, it should be an easy dub for them, as long as they can keep to the script, make sure their defense shows up, gets pressure on Jameis Winston, and stops the rushing game with Nick Chubb. Because you never know. He could go off against a divisional foe. But I think Najee Harris will have a great game. I think Pickens will have a great game. Russell Wilson, I hope you have a good game because I'm rooting for you, man. Uh, you are a mild quarterback, and I hope you can get to the playoff and get a couple of wins. It would be cool to see. Uh, but for now, Pittsburgh is in the top five still, and I think they could be trending up. We'll have to see what the top three looks like next week. At three, guys, the moment we've all been waiting for. Finally, finally, the Chiefs have lost, and they moved down one spot. <laughs> so I've had them at two for a while. I think it's been four weeks that they've been at the number two spot behind the Lions. Um, and now they moved down one more spot. 
Kansas City, tough loss against the Bills, 21 to 30. Move down to 9 and 1. You're still top of the NFL, so you shouldn't be complaining or anything like that. And you should have a game this week that you should win against the Panthers. Uh, of course, 11 point favorites in this game. I think I like it, but again, I could see the Panthers coming out and hopefully put in a game up here. Uh, but Kansas City Chiefs should win. They should stay in the top three. But if they miraculously lose, I don't know how far they're going to drop, guys. Panthers are at 24, so that'd be a huge loss to the 24th ranked team in my power rankings. We'll have to wait and see. Go ahead and put some comments down in, in there if you're a Chiefs fan. At number two, I have the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> it makes me so happy to know that the first week I did this in week five, that I had the Bills at number one, and they finally resurged themselves to number two after falling, you know, out to number six at their lowest uh, so I don't feel as crazy as some of you said that the Bills are way too high. Uh, but now they're back. So again, do I have the best mind for power rankings? Let me know down in the comments. Maybe I'm just full of myself, but let me know, guys. <laughs> but, of course, the dub against Kansas City, 30-21 to 21 this week. They're going to go ahead and have a bye. So it's going to be a game for them to kind of resurge themselves. A late bye is always good for a team. That's sitting pretty at 8-3. and three. Uh, So, again, Buffalo sits at the top of their division. I don't see anybody. Oh, I'm sorry. Buffalo is at 9-2. and two. My bad. I don't see anybody rivaling Buffalo as they are five games ahead of the Dolphins in this division. I don't think the Bills will lose uh, two more games this season. We'll have to wait and see, though. There's a lot of season left to go. But, Buffalo, you should be staying in the top three next week, even though you have a bye. I still think you're a great team, so root for you. And ding, 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 somebody help the NFL because, of course, unlike that Jake Paul fight, <laughs> I think Mike Tyson is basically the Detroit Lions, of course, in his prime. Uh, but Detroit is just really good guys at this point in time, and I think this game that's coming up should be another great one. But – Beating the Jags 52-6, to six, they finally put a 50-burger up in the NFL. They've scored a lot of points this year. I mean, the points for, for them are insane. I want to see their differential. Uh, I haven't looked it up, but I bet it's insane. I bet it's close to the hundreds, if not already getting in the hundreds, uh, because they've clobbered on some teams quite literally almost every week. Uh, but Detroit 9-1 and one, should be moving up to 10-1, the first team to win 10 games. Uh, it, it's going to be crazy. You know, we're going to have two 10 and one teams, which are the Kansas city chiefs and the Detroit lions. If everything goes well this week for them. And I think it's great to see, <laughs> I mean, already in week 12, having two teams 10 and one is just amazing. Uh, but Indianapolis, I hope you guys can play up to par. I hope you make this game closer than it probably should be. Uh, I'm rooting for Anthony Richardson, but I'm also rooting for the lions. The lions are Really, not a dark horse anymore, but they're my favorite to win the Super Bowl. So that'll be 1 through 32 of the power rankings here, guys. Let me know down in the comments if you think I'm crazy. Let me know if you think I'm totally accurate, as I've just killed it, in my opinion. Uh, but, of course, if you think I'm wrong, let me know where I went wrong. Let me know where I went right. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And, of course, make sure... You roast me whenever you can. Join the Discord. I'm there all the time, or at least I try to be. Uh, so ask for fantasy advice if you still need any. And of course, ask why your team is where they are. More than happy to tell you why. But for now, guys, as we always say on this channel, that's going to be it. Hope you like this power rankings and keep on grinding. <laughs>